up in Boston this morning, some of the nation's top chief financial officers are gathering at MIT's Sloan CFO Summit. Bloomberg's Carol Masser is there as well, and she joins us. Carol? Hi, Margaret. Good morning, everybody. I am here with the CFO of Duke Energy. She is Lynn Good. Lynn, good to have you here this morning. Thanks so much, Carol. It's a pleasure to be here. I think the big question is about the energy of Pro uh, the, the merger, I should say, with Progress Energy. Talk to me about how it's going and, and when you expect it to close. Sure. We announced the merger in January of this year and have been moving through regulatory approvals. But now we're expecting year-end or slightly after. We're, we're still waiting approval from the FERC. It's taking a little bit longer, though, than you expected, because I think you thought it was going to close by the end of the year. It is. Uh, we received conditional approval from FERC at the end of September and have offered remediation that uh, they are reviewing. We've asked for a ruling by December 15th, and that will then cascade approvals into the states following that approval receipt. There will be con some concessions involved in getting this through? or You know, there's something called virtual mitigation that we've offered, which uh, is, uh, we believe is responsive to the concerns that FERC had. So we're hopeful that approval will follow. Is there more deals to come? And I bring this up because Progress's CEO, Bill Johnson, made some comments. He's going to become the CEO of the newly combined company that you guys could make additional uh, acquisitions. You know the balance sheet well. Um, could you see some other big deals coming down the road? You know, we're believers in scale uh, in this industry with infrastructure build and all the capital needs to be spent, the need to be productive, drive out cost savings. So I think there is a case for consolidation in the industry, but right now we're focused on closing this one and moving through these approvals like we talked about. But it sounds like bigger is better in the industry, so it makes Easily. sense to kind of be looking at interesting opportunities. Yes, and these, these transactions are big, they're hard to do, they require regulatory approvals, so you have to be opportunistic about them, and that's why our focus right now is on completing this merger. Talk to me just a little bit about the job environment right now for you guys. I think it's, everybody's in question whether or not companies feel comfortable enough to, to hire at this point. Do you guys feel? You know, we will hire as needed in certain parts of the business. But you'll lose some jobs as a result of the merger. But we are also digesting the merger, and we'll have some consolidation. We're offering voluntary severance to our employees, those who might have an interest in moving or not transitioning into the new company. So our hiring is selective right now while we move through the integration of the two companies. One last question, because we just got off a panel uh, with yourself and, and a few other CFOs. In terms of the macro environment, you guys were not at all upbeat. You're worried about what's to come. We, we are. We're very cautious. I think at best, slow recovery in the U.S. We're still watching unemployment. We're watching the housing market and, of course, watching Europe. What do you think is going to happen with Europe? Uh, lots of uncertainty there. Hard to predict. And it's making it harder to make decisions at it this point. It certainly is. All right. We're going to leave there. Lynn, thank you so much thank for finding you. time. It's been my pleasure. We appreciate it. Lynn Good, she's the CFO of Duke Energy.